hearts. Share this, that's all I want to do, YouTube. Ah, there's a delay going on there. Thank you, that's what I wanted. Okay, so taking a break from uh, endless laps of Monaco uh, in preparation for the next HSO Gold Star event. And uh, yeah, um, I saw a video about this uh, 1985 version of Bathurst Mount Panorama circuit um, that was. Uh, a work in progress from Mike Cantwell who created also created the awesome Nublar track uh, and various others I think including Oran Park uh, and Lakeside which I really want to try as well because um, Lakeside's an amazing little track so is Oran Park but uh, thank you Mike if you happen to ever see this kudos to you my friend so yeah I thought I'd take my little Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Spider around for a spin uh, with absolutely no expectation about performance or anything just want to see what it's like um, 1985 Mount Panorama was just uh, it was the second last year before uh, Conrod Strait um, was, uh, what's the word, uh, declawed, um, neutered, uh, but yeah, 1985, uh, I was early in my adolescence at that time, first uh, year of Group A uh, in Australia, so the Bathurst 1000 was a completely new race after years of um, Peter Brock dominance in the, the Group C Holden Commodores. Uh, and yeah, Tom Walkinshaw and his amazing Jaguars um, decided that they wanted to come down and uh, do the race. And they dominated. And uh, I love my Australian Group C cars, Group A cars. Uh, big Nissan GTR fan for example love the Sierra the Skylines the Beamers loved Group A in particular but the Jaguars for me uh, just a special car and the, the sound of that thing around Bathurst just sensational so this won't sound anything like that but um, yeah I'm just gonna I've just set up a little practice session here I've got a few AI uh, from the 1954 sports car mod which actually has a lot more than 29 cars in it so it's going to be a little bit of a mix and match of um, larger and smaller cars but I've just got a practice session set up here um, starting with a green track hopefully there'll be some rubber put down these cars are incredibly difficult to drive with out any rubber on the track or they're incredibly difficult to drive even with rubber on the track 
Um, so there we go. Um, so yeah, uh, this is um, this brings back some fond memories. I was watching some highlights of the 85 Bathurst uh, race during the week actually and there are some amazing YouTube videos out there with a lot of in-car footage of Tom Walkinshaw's Jaguar so um, if, you're any, if your taste is anything like mine um, I'd highly recommend looking those videos up so I'm going to just take my Monte Carlo setup but uh, do the gearing that's the one I want longest gearing uh, but I'm pretty happy with that setup so I wonder who we're practicing again against Ferrari Ferrari the Talbot lots of good cars here anyway I'm not too worried about them I just want to uh, get out there and have a bit of a, a look, a bit of a tootle around. This is an interesting... okay. So yeah, there's obviously an 85, there's a pit complex here, but actually what have I done there? I've missed the boat. It's a good start. Lost in the uh, pit lane. Bloody brilliant. And whoa, that's better. Ah, oh, they've got the speed humps. These speed humps. The controversial speed humps. <laughs> that's that's brilliant. So yeah, they did actually have speed humps in the mid to late eighties. Got a Belgian. Uh, I think it's the C-type Jaguar in front of me here. That's brilliant having those um, speed humps. Several cars actually lost their um, oil sumps on those back in the day. I think there was one year where a contender, maybe even Alan Moffat in the Mazda, uh, went way too fast over those humps. And um, yeah, tore something out of the bottom of the car. So, yeah, I mean, surroundings, first impression. Surroundings are maybe a little bit bare right now, but this is an early release, and from what I read on the work, Steam Workshop, Mike's going to be doing some work on this, and this is a practice session. And I do have medium detail on, and I do wonder. I do, oh! I do wonder whether I need to get out of this and turn on full detail. As I noticed with um, his Nublas, Nublar, Nublas, however you pronounce that. Um, with that track, uh, I was missing a lot of detail until I turned the seat circuit detail right on. So actually what I'm going to do here, apologies for the maybe one person who's watching this, is I'm going to get out uh, and change my graphics settings back, which is what I should have looked at in the first place, full. Let's try it in full. 
and we'll go in again. Uh, yeah, those speed humps in pit lane. Um, I'm pretty sure they took care of Alan Moffat's chances one year and probably many others who were just a little too hungry going over them when they were blasting out of the pits. Anyway, let's see what we have here. Okay, so let's load that up. What I might do with this is just drop the rear anti-roll bar. Just attach that there, make it a little uh, sluggish, but uh, easy to drive. Easier to drive, I should say. And... Uh, Better ch I want to change that gearing to see what the Merc can do down Conrod and I'm very likely to kill myself over one of these humps on Conrod and that is the big attraction of this track. Um, it wasn't until I was older, much older than what I was in 1985 and I, I was reading much more about Bathurst and the Bathurst 1000 that um, Conrod in its old form was just unbelievably dangerous um, for, from a combination of uh, crown on the road I believe humps uh, ramps in the track as you'll see hopefully and also um, Conrod's quite exposed to the prevailing wind so you'd often have a cross breeze and uh, unfortunately in 1986 uh, we had Mike Bergman in his Commodore um, coming over the last hump and uh, I believe getting put off by something, either wind, but he got a little bit sideways uh, while he was air. Oh, that's not good. Oh dear. Not a good start at all, sorry. Um, he got airborne as you do over the last hump, but he uh, lost the rear. I think maybe got one wheel on the grass on the inside of the track and then went into that bridge the foot of that John Player special bridge that you just see could just see off to the right there and uh, unfortunately it was a terrible accident and uh, yeah I guess he died doing something he loved which is uh, one thing but it was, it was a terrible accident and I do remember as a kid back then watching it live and they actually, unlike today, where well, they'll show anything but the accident or the aftermath of the accident. Um, yeah, they, they were very much focused on what were and still are some pretty distressing scenes. So, yeah, um, and that is on YouTube, although I wouldn't encourage looking that up. Not because it's um, too much blood or gore or anything like that, but just um, let's just say, oh, he's going to do it again. Uh, let's just say it's you know what's happening, and uh, as you may have noticed. Very good at uh, talking and driving at the same time. But, uh, yeah, this feels good so far. Little, few little issues with the edge of the track there. Coming up over the hump where Kevin Bartlett rolled his Camaro in um, 
I think it was 1983. Beautiful car that was, the Channel 9 Camaro. Down through Skyline. It's an evocative part of the track. The dipper. Instant oversteer. You almost just hold the wheel straight and go through there. Uh, if you do turn with the corner, you'll be likely losing the rear pretty easily. And the forest elbow, which is... That is not the way to take forest elbow. So, Conrod without the chase. Let's see what these humps are like. Well, in particular, the last hump, so... Oh, yeah. So about now we'd be turning into the chase. This is the hump in question. Oh yeah, that's brutal. This Mike, um, we uh, did a race on one of your one of Mike's tracks. Nubla it was round one of our HSO 2023 Gold Star. Whoa! Tracks green, so very slippery. there coming out of the cutting at one point that was almost like what a, a Nordschleifer-esque jump like a little ledge that the cars would pop over I thought it was still like that in 85 but I might need to go back and research that I've bent my uh, suspension here with that little bore bonk into the um oh too fast yeah yeah i've got bent steering so i'm not going to punish myself here um yeah let's look at that little bump come there's definitely something there but as i recall it in the early 80s he used to get completely airborne going out of the cutting and then there'd be this little ledge uh, and there was a tree on the right hand side just after that actually the tree was which you'd actually point you'd steer towards to go through the first right hander after the cutting speed humps. Let me cheat here. I don't know what the speed pit lane speed limit is here. I just broke it I think. So, yeah, love the look of this track, looks great. And is he going to crash again? He is. Might have got away with that one, but this isn't a very inspiring driving performance. Less talking and more driving, I think. Just about here. Little 
hole in the side of the track there by the look at it. done literally thousands of uh, laps of the modern version of this track, mainly in GT3 cars, but uh, this feels different and that's good. So hello Chase, off to the right, this bump here, well I need to, yeah I'm airborne over that. Very conservative with the brakes here. outside there, which is good. I think a couple of BMWs got buried in that in the 85 Bathurst 1000. Breaking way too late for this corner, the GTX. Probably need to kick it back another gear there too. that ledge. It's probably not as pronounced, quite as pronounced as what I thought it would be, but I may have my ears wrong in terms of there being a hump coming out of the cutting. Fast, nice and steady. Don't turn the wheel because you oversteer straight away. feel off it too. These, gut, these Armco barriers off to the left here, they were definitely there in 85. Whoa, that's crazy. advertising here. Don't worry about the cigarette advertising, peeps. Any kids watching, don't smoke. It's bad for you.
shallow there. Yep, the key with the dipper. Just keep the wheel straight almost. Especially in this car anyway. Which oversteers oversteers at any side of turning lock. But yeah, I noticed already I like I've got the longest gearing longest final ratio um, with these cars you can only adjust the final ratio because um, I'd be playing around with the individual gears here. whoa that's crazy none of this modern Bathurst of full throttle under that bridge and then jam on the brakes at 100 metres or 150 it's, that is a very hairy braking zone which really lines up with um, what the drivers used to say about that braking zone into Murray's very dangerous a lot nicer this smirk than uh, what I thought it would I thought it would be like a dog on a uh, wet kitchen floor in terms of behaviour but uh, except for this section it's uh, quite docile I do have a pretty tight uh, understeer type setup to combat that which I only really change on uh, a track like Monaco which is um, you just really need to turn the car a lot Let's see what I'm getting to down the straight here 240, I'm going to get to 250. Beautiful. About the same as the. Whoa! That's brilliant, that last hump. I was getting about 255 there, I think. Almost top of the range. About, I think, funnily enough, similar to what the Jaguars were doing in 1985. And this is in a car 30 years older. shift early there out of the cutting
fast into there. I've got a lot of memories going through my head right now. Like uh, when I was a kid. Bathurst was the only weekend of the year you'd get me out of bed at 7 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And uh, I could barely sleep the night before. Particularly in the early 80s. Hoping... Whoops. Too much talking, not enough driving. Um, oh, okay, that's an Aston Martin DB3. But yeah, I was, uh, Bathurst is really what hooked me on motor racing growing up as a kid in Australia. rubber on the track and some more rhythm I could go through GTX in third two second there is just a little bit too short but yeah I was hooked on Bathurst and um, in the 80s in particular I was uh, one of the few people that wasn't a Holden or a Ford fan because my mum uh, bought a Nissan Bluebird which started running at Bathurst in uh, 80, 1980 or 81 and uh, by, whoa, that's not good, that's not good. Um, by 83, they were an outright contender, the Bluebird. That's another Aston Martin next to me, I think. A kangaroo stable Aston Martin, which is the Australian team in the HSO series I'm running in. Yeah. The Aston doesn't quite, it's in the same class as the Mercedes, the 3 litre class, but as you can see, doesn't quite have the uh, legs in a straight line that the Mercedes does. Hey Tom, I'm uh, doing real well, thanks. Hope you are too. Just, uh, yeah, thought I'd check this out because it's a wonderful track. But, uh, Maybe not the best cars to do your first laps of this track in. But anyway, still a lot of fun. You should uh, get the Lancer out. Whoa, that's a bit quick through there kind of uh, thinking I'm a GT car a bit right now and with all the uh, all the corresponding lines and turning points that you have in a GT3 which don't really work with this car
Yeah, that's true. Yep, Bathurst. One of the things I love about it. Um, and I was just... Yeah, Bathurst and the Nordschleifer. <laughs> that's true as well, Tom. These are the best cars to do anything in. Well, they're the most fun and most rewarding when you start actually being able to pedal them reasonably quickly. But yeah, Bathurst is... Um, that's a Fraser Nash here. I'm going to blow the doors off. Back in the day, they used to talk about how how difficult it was to pass people on Bathurst in the 1000 because of the bumps and the crosswinds. Just crazy. Break too late there, but just going to manage to pull it up. Um, yeah, but it's changed very little, much like the Nordschleifer. And that's one reason why uh, this afternoon, for example, I'll very happily sit down and watch the um, Bathurst 12 hour and watch the GT3s, GT3 cars run around on it because um, there's still a lot of consequences on this track, whereas uh, a track like Spa, amazing as it is, um, is slowly getting all those consequences knocked out of it. Particularly with the changes they've made now to uh, try and get motorbikes racing back there, I believe. I meant to ask... Yeah. Oh, the... Yeah, I... What I like about being in Canada is that A, I don't have to get up at 4.30 in the morning to watch the start of the 12 hour, <coughs> excuse me, but uh, I also, can, it starts at about 3, 3.45 here p.m., probably late about bedtime. Uh, where you are, Tom, if it was me anyway. Oh, that's wrong. Yeah, not taking my own advice there about not actually steering into that corner. But yeah, I can watch the first seven or eight hours of the 12 hour, go to bed, get up the next morning and um, watch the last couple of hours or the rest of it. Yeah, it should be a good race as always, but yeah, it's one of the few GT3 races I'll definitely stop and watch every year. Uh, the one at Spa is good, but it's GT3 only, and I prefer a bit of multi-class action. In my races. It's time for a restart. <coughs> yeah, um, really looking forward to the 12 hour. That and the Nurburgring uh, 24 are generally the two races I'll watch that have GT3s in them. How am I going time wise? I think I'm way off the pace here, even though the AI is only on 102. Jeez, yeah. I had to get my ass into gear. Three, four seconds off the pace. I read somewhere on Steam that uh, there was a problem with the AI here. They were too slow. And uh, <laughs> if that's the case, I'm in a lot of trouble. Yeah, imps are I like. Um, didn't catch any of Daytona. Unfortunately, um, in Canada, uh, they have it on this channel that's um, called Discover Velocity. 
and I swear it's 75% ads and 25% racing. Uh, I should really get just get a VPN and watch it on YouTube, but um, IMS is definitely a great series. I'm looking forward to um, this new era of endurance racing with um, the kind of parity they're doing between IMSA and the um, WEC. Like Le Mans in the next few years and all these Blue Riband endurance events are just going to be amazing with Ferraris and Lamborghinis or Porsches, BMWs, all these prototypes running around. It's going to be hopefully one of the best eras of sports car race, racing. Okay. I'll add that to my um, 35 hour long watch later list on YouTube. That's, I did see the end of that. That was where I think an Aussie guy won it basically on the line, right? He drafted around the final turn. James Allen, I think. Aussie guy. Don't turn. Yeah, that's... Jesus, that's a difficult turn. Oh, I can't talk and concentrate, unfortunately. Alright. So, yeah, I did see the end. Like, literally from the bus stop to the finish line. Um, but, uh, yeah, I might, I might uh, switch on the last hour sometime this week. What have I got a Gordini in front of me? stay behind. Yeah, the dip is really catching me out here. It's going to start pissing me off even more if I don't start getting it right through there. Come on, Gordini. Jack Brabham. That's something to hang your hat on. Used to having a little bit more uh, tarmac on the exit of that corner. But I'm um, loving this circuit. Racing here would be a huge challenge, provided the grid and everything works right. The pits, I think there's some work to be done on the pit area here. Oh, that's what I meant to ask you, Tom. Are you just like sandbagging at Monaco? Just got another two seconds under your sl uh, up your sleeve, waiting to uh, demoralise Izzy at the last moment of pre-qualifying. Oh, he's done it again! Jesus! That corner, I've got to work that out. How much damage have I got here? It's only on my front end. Body work. I'll stay out here. Oh, okay. I think there's a bit of a delay on the chat here, but um, so you are trying hard. That's surprising. Um, uh, okay. 
I did notice that um, at Crystal Palace, some of the slides you were getting on were just awesome to watch. No doubt. And I guess you can't soften the, uh, the anti-roll bars up to try and take that out. You've probably already tried that. Ah, the bumps. Yeah. It's a good thing and a bad thing that you can't adjust too much on these cars. Keeps it relatively simple, but <laughs> I'm sure you'd be thinking you'd like to adjust the suspension. And the springs, you know. Try and dial some of that out. going too fast through there, I think. That's maybe... I need to take... get really close to the inside, the apex. Well, if you get 44-2, will get you towards the front. Uh, on race day. Well, at the very, very pointy end of it. That's probably going to be a good thing at uh, Monaco as well. I do have this fear that um, one of us is going to have a moment. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> one of us is going to have a moment into the chicane. And... Uh, it's only going to take one person to lose it in that chicane to uh, really screw um, screw over some a lot of other drivers. Yeah, the chat. Um, I did have a look last week to see if I could make the chat live, but I think there's a delay. Uh, there's a 30 second delay I think and it's I don't think it's something you can remove but um, yeah exactly Dundrod what a nightmare that must have been really traumatic for you I mean you're basically squeezed or oh, three into two won't go basically from what I recall uh, that's just that was just an extraordinarily difficult start. Right, so I meant to. Um, I don't think I caught it at uh, Le Mans or Le Grand, but uh, where you were just annihilating everyone. But uh, you had something happen quite early in the race, I think. But I don't think I caught it. Did you uh, have an incident with someone? Or That's better. Um, 50%? Well, that's a racing incident then. I was very impressed by the way you came onto the, uh, I know you felt bad because um, 
I was mighty impressed at how you came onto the forum the next day, or the Discord. And, uh, you were obviously very affected by it. Oh, you... Ah, okay. Avoiding Toby. I think he had a few incidents in that race. Was he having an accident with someone else when you were trying to avoid him? In, when you say the forest S's, you mean Indianapolis, like that fast right, the, the really difficult... Uh, if it was Indianapolis, like that is, a, that is easily the most difficult corner on the track in these cars. And uh, I'd say you've got about a 5% chance of getting through there if you're too wide with someone. Even a, even everything going well. Oh, those. So yeah, that's unfortunate, mate. You did a good recovery drive from there, though, from what I recall. A shorter, slightly shorter gear ratio here. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. Ah, oh, the the actual S's. Yeah, okay. Well, they're pretty difficult too. Uh, particularly because of the camber. If you do get a slide on, it's very difficult to um, actually recover. I reckon that's the gearing for this track. One click back. Yep. Alright, let's see how this goes. Because I think I remember you passing you while you were in the pits a bit. You were way in front of me then later in the race. I think. My old man memory might be failing me. Well, you're certainly making up for it in HSO uh, anyway. Even when Rob uh, turned up in the other lands here at Nublar, you still were a lot faster. Oh, Taran. Sorry, Gordini. Jesus. to actually make the race into Bristol uh, at Le Mans. Sorry, Le Grand. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, uh, 
um, after my experience at Spa. I was uh, thought there was no way I was going to qualify at uh, Le Mans. But uh, Scooby took pity on me and basically sat ahead of me <laughs> doing about 250 which was the perfect speed to tow me around and save shaved like three seconds of my lap time. Oh, this is going to be hairy. Hang on, Wardini. Nerfing me like that. C-type. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm catching up with your comment there. Well, C-Type uh, Spa was crazy competitive. I actually drove the wheels off the Bristol there and thought I'd pretty much got close to a perfect lap, but I was still nowhere near uh, qualifying. You want to drive a C-Type? That might be a... might be a good idea, it'll be in terms of the outright class it will uh, be a big chance at Targa Florio because it turns and drives out of corners so what much better I'm sure you know all this already whoops Oh, I think it's Fangio behind me, looking impatient. I should let him by and... Oh, I gained on him there. Wow. There's definitely a lot of time to be made up in the braking in this section. Um, thank you, yeah. <laughs> that lap I did at Targa um, was easily one of the best laps I've ever done. Uh, yet I was still 20 odd seconds behind Isidoro, which tells you <laughs> as much as you need to know about his skill. Um, I'm full of excuses for uh, Targa. I was uh, actually not feeling that great that day and I was nervous as I just was really nervous my heart was racing and uh, what I what, a critical mistake I made oh that's bad turning a critical mistake I made was um, having all this HUD information and uh, Yerne was uh, right he was uh, behind me on track and I was kept looking at the split to him and uh, I was like okay I'm gonna he's gonna keep pace with me in the first third of the lap but I'll start pulling away from him when we go over the mountain Unfortunately, I had a little bonk coming out of Cherda on the uh, one of the hairpins coming out of Cherda, and uh, then I was just getting psyched out because Yerne was keeping up with me, and uh, I ended up crashing. Uh, a second time 
in the Buonafello kink. That kink in the main, the long straight. And um, almost took Yerne out and Oscari. Like I was just sitting in the middle of the kink. And I just, yeah, it was terrible. So, um, anyway, I, uh, I managed not to take them out of the race, thank God. As they came flying through not long after me. Um, and then, yeah, I pitted. I lost about uh, two minutes in the pits. And... Um, it was just a recovery drive after that. So in the end, I was actually quite happy to finish and uh, grab some points. So I don't really think I deserve to. But yeah, I was very, very upset with myself. The thing with huts, um, they're great. They, I love to know what's going on in the race and uh, keep an eye on fuel consumption and everything, but um, they can be distracting and I'm not going to make the mistake of looking at my split, keeping an eye on my split to someone, particularly at Target. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. But I can't complain too much. I feel f feel most for Izzy, who had a disconnect when he was strolling away at the front. I was proud of that quality lap, though. Absolutely drove it like I stole it. Jesus. Amazed I saved that. stick with that Lance here and just gather a few gold silk stars and um, then pick something else for next year. Thank you. Lucky save, not a good save. Anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, it's quite I like how pump oh an airborne there, that's crazy. Alright, starting to get a feel for this track now. put it into the top 10. Fangio's done a 2.32. Well, that's Fangio for you. I'm not going to get anywhere near that without a few more hours practice. Turn in there. 
I love this run up through Reed Park. The great wall. That's a bit close for comfort. That's kind of what you want to do on a really hot lap. Gorgeous three litre. Sorry, this chat delay is killing me. What do you mean? Um, oh, you want to race in three litre or? Or are you asking about the composition of the field here? Whoa. Oh, sorry, I didn't. I'm not reading your uh, chat properly. Yeah, I'm just running with the HSO, so all classes. But. There's only um, 29 AI, so it's not a... I didn't choose the cars. Oh, there's Fan... Whoa, Fangio doing donuts on the inside of Murray's. That's golden moment. Um, yeah, it's a combination of all classes, Tom. Sorry about that. See if I can catch this Akuri Frankenstein. Uh, what I think is a C type. It's just teasing me up the road here. I wonder what happened to Fangio there. damage. Oh boy. Tough track. I might have to try and convince Frank to uh, get us racing here. It's definitely a track that they did race on in the 50s. Including that man, Tom Solman, who actually died at, uh, I think he died on Conrod Strait. The old Conrod Strait. So, oh, Ferraris. Do we have a Lancia here? I don't think we have a Lancia in this field. No, we don't. But it'd be in front if it was. If there was. Okay, I've got half an hour left. And I want to get into the top ten here. Oh, slow down in the pit lane though. Yeah, there's something oh, back behind the C-type again. Um, going on with the performance of the MM. I, I might have just dropped out and come back in there. Apologies if I did. Um, yeah, the Ferrari factory, or the 375, they're not much of a plus right now. I think they 
Well, I know there's going to be some changes. I think this thing I'm sitting in is going to be slowed down a bit, which is fine. Um, so maybe they'll address that with the Ferraris. But yeah, the MM is just seems way too competitive. They should be as quick as the, the Lance here at the minimum. Although I think in... It's oh, one way to let Fangio pass. Um, I think in 54, the Lance here was the quicker car. And I don't know, for whatever reason, they didn't actually compete at Le Mans. Which is why they weren't in the original mod, I believe is that Wuchu very much based the field on the 54 Le Mans field. Um, but I think for the races that they, the Lanciers did compete in, they are actually the class of the field. Oh, look at this little Oscar. But yeah, so that's one thing I like about HSO is that the cars are a little different. Ah, okay. I thought they had a car in 54 as well. I must go and do my research, obviously. That's the case, they must have beaten the sea type by a country mile. Little Porsche here. I love these little Porsches. That would actually be the car to drive a Targa Florio. I honestly think they'd be in an win with an outright chance at um, Targa. better than anything I've done over the top. Now. Yeah, yeah, they... I wonder why they didn't run it at Le Mans. A weird upshift there, I think there was something. Although I'm up to near top speed now. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I swear I read they were... I think they may have won at Sebring or one of the other rounds that was in the World Sports Car Championship that year. Maybe even Buenos Aires. Let's catch this Belgian monster. second. Thanks for the clarification, Tom. Sebring, Mick, Mill, Mill, Mick. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Oh God, 
that's very slow through there. And Dundrod. Okay, that, yeah, first, second, first and first is pretty competitive. Tom, did you know all of this before you decided to drive one, or is this font of knowledge um, just been gathered since you hopped in the Lancia? as I'd want to break into Murray's. Gotcha. And was it mainly Wikipedia or... Where, what was your go-to for um, info about that era? Oh, it kills me not having asphalt out there on the exit. Fast. Um, yeah, well, online's great. I'd love to, there's apparently these books that basically summarise Le Mans for every year in great detail or by the decade, but they're horrendously expensive. Great uh, blog. Uh, you may have seen me mention it on my Discord, on the Discord, um, called Primo Tipo, and uh, it's a, just an amazing. It's got a big Australian focus, um, but there's a lot of history in there about sports car and Formula One. Uh, throughout mainly up to the 70s. Uh, the photography is just spectacular in this blog. 
you've probably already seen it, but I thought I'd mention it. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah, right, okay. Maybe you could post a photo on our Discord sometime, Tom, of uh, John's bookshelf. I'd love to see that. That'd get Frank going too, because he's a real history nerd, as you well know. Do that, mate, that'd be great. That's better. Bit of rubber on the track helps. I forgot to look where I am now. I must be in the top ten. I am! And only one and a half seconds off Fangio. Well that's probably... I'd be happy to be within one and a half seconds of him in real life. So I think I'll take that. How long have I got? 18 minutes. I think I'll kill this stream at the end of this session. Go and grab something to eat and get ready for the 12 hour. Look at this beautiful Porsche. That might be your dad there actually, Tom. Mr. D Senior. Oh, this might be awkward. Sorry, John. Oh, he's going around the outside. Oh, oh. That was fun. Killed my lap time, but anyway. <laughs> Next time I will. He'll probably catch me over the mountain. <laughs> oh, dear. Whoa. My thoughts of having him off got me all excited and breaking too late into that corner. There you go. Have him off. Whoa, that, oh, that was on the edge. to um, Skyline there. Gee. Uh, I thought I saw the stream drop out just now, so apologies. I'm just... I wanted to jump in and check. Oh, I did get a disconnect. Must have been something with my internet there. But I think I'm back, so... Let's... Uh, Let's get out there for one last blast, 15 minute blast. I'll take seventh. First go on this track in this car. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this track though, highly challenging. Looks a little bit modern maybe for HSO. But uh, the track is the same, um, identical, maybe a little smoother and a few more fences around it than it was, uh, <coughs> than it was uh, back in the 60s and 50s. Pretty sure they held the Australian Grand Prix here in the uh, 1950s. And if uh, 
this sim doesn't impersonate reality enough, I think the winner of that Grand Prix is sitting in fifth place in uh, in uh, this session, Peter Whitehead. There you go, art imitating life. He obviously loves this track, Pete. That section, that section feels really good with some rubber on the track. But this, this is a lot of fun to drive. There's the bump. Oh, it's a Fraser Nash in front of me and this is going to oversteer out of control, well caught. Too worried about what was going on down the road. Yeah, this is, I'd love to do a race on this track. Here's Fangio again. Let me draft you down Conrad, oh great one. Oh, don't take the draft then. Oh, here we go. Fraser Nash and an Oscar. Thread the needle. <laughs> Jesus. Terrible driving there. Those Fraser Nashes should be banned. But here he is caught up to me again. I think these AI are demons on any setting uh, above 100. They're on 102 for this session and uh, they're demons in particular in the braking zone. Come on Juan, just let me tow you around. I'm going to give you a nice tow here and then let you through but you want to weave around the track and try and distract me. Is he going to go up the inside here? No. Oh, Porsche. Wrong place, wrong time. how you have to cheat to be fast compared to these AI anyway. A bit conservative there but still almost losing it into Forest Elbow. Ah, Alright. I probably should have tried a low fuel run with this thing. <coughs> This thing is like an excited dog on a wet kitchen floor on anything less than half a tank of fuel. It's crazy how unstable it gets.
remember to shift at the right time. It's a bit gutless in fourth, this car. Oh, it's Reese in front of me. I'm definitely going to have him off. Or it's Jack Brabham, I should say. Look out, Jack. Slash Reese, I'm coming for you. Yeah, this once you know, once you get in a rhythm here, it feels so much nicer. Oh, it's probably the rubber on the track. Can I get past him here? Oh, probably not. Damn you, Reese. Look how much he makes up on me on the brakes. how the AI is using the left side of the track here because that was the actual line back in the day uh, for all the cars and unfortunately it was very unstable on the right hand side of the track so passing cars on Conrod um, was very very difficult here I am gonna smoke Jack Brabham up straight here oh it's not too bad actually out of that corner. Oh, sorry Jack, slash Reese. But you can stay behind me though. Oh, Silver Star. Oh, that's a Kevin Bartlett special. I think that's me. That was a lot of fun. I'll take uh, seventh. Gonzalez or Froelian, Froelian Gonzalez. And yeah, there's the factory Ferrari and the MM. So very little difference. And another Ferrari. Yeah, I'm off to shortly, Tom. Great. Thank you for plugging in and keeping me company, mate. It's been fun to chat with you. And, uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, they're very, I would say they're very well done for a rank amateur. But thank you, mate. Great chatting with you. And uh, I'll see you on the track in Monaco. And, uh, yeah, I might switch off then. Alright, bye for now.